All right, so we've already established the virtual machine. It's powered off, and now we're gonna tweak some of the settings. There were other settings which were set when we were putting the machine together, but now there are more settings which need to be adjusted. So we go into settings. The general ones are okay. Under system motherboard. I see that the, my old VM had twice as much as I set this one for. So I'm gonna bump that up. Okay, I'll make it the same. And then for the boot order, we're not gonna be booting from any floppy, so it's optical and hard drive, but it should boot from the hard drive first. However, we're still installing. Hmm. Anyways, I think, uh, I'll just make it the same as my old one. So I'm gonna take the hard drive and make that the first in the boot order. Okay. And then floppy, get that out of the way. Okay, so now it looks the same as this one. And then these are all the same. Okay, so we go next to processors. So for processors, I'm going to choose, make it two processors. And then I don't touch that one. Then I'm going to click this. Enable P-A-E-N-X. Okay. Okay, next we're going to go to storage. Since we're going to be installing Ubuntu, and we're going to be installing it, from a disk, then we're going to need to configure that disk over here. Notice when I clicked here, this also changed. So I'm going to need to put the ISO for Ubuntu in the disk drive. So I'll click here, choose virtual optical disk file, I'm going to need to navigate to the desktop because that's where I put it. I guess that would be, okay, wait. Desktop right there. And there's the ISO. I'm going to open it. Okay, so now it has the ISO in the virtual optical drive. Next, we go to audio. And I'm going to uncheck Enable audio. All right, next we go to networking. Now with networking, we have several options. The only option that I really am familiar with is the NAT option. And that basically allows us to access the ports and the services running on those ports in the virtual machine. We can now, if we use NAT, access them from the Macintosh. NAT stands for Network Address Translation. So it's basically a mechanism for protecting access inside of the network. And the network here refers to the network, the local network that is of the virtual machine. And it's translation, so there is port forwarding. The only way that the Mac can access services running on the virtual machine is through port forwarding. If we don't forward any ports, then there is no access from the Macintosh to the operating system on the virtual machine, along with the services that are running on that operating system. What NAT does to provide security is it hides all the IP addresses of the operating system on the virtual machine. Basically, the only network card that is accessible on the virtual machine is the loopback IP address and the network card for it. Basically, what this would do when NAT is used for virtual machines is it affords the virtual machine the same protection as the host machine, which is the Macintosh. So if there's an attack coming from the internet, if it can get through to your Macintosh, 
then it can get through on the loopback IP address of the virtual machine. Essentially, they become like one thing. And all the virtual machine becomes is a set of extra ports on the Macintosh, which is hosting the virtual machine. However, it is a little bit more complicated than that because applications that are running on the virtual machine tend to look for where a request is coming from and it attaches an IP address to that. So the services on the virtual machine will see a particular IP address for the Macintosh and it sees itself as having a particular IP address besides the actual loopback IP address. But that's a topic for another day. Okay, you, you can see that the host side, which is the Macintosh, the ports are non-standard port numbers. That way, if we want to use the standard ones on the Macintosh, we don't have to worry. They won't conflict with the ports that we have for the virtual machine. I'm going to basically just copy those. So let's go to port forwarding plus and for HTTP TCP on the host, it is 8080. So that's on the Macintosh and in the virtual machine, it's 80. Add one more. This one is going to be my SQL. Host port 9306, and the guest port is 3306. For SSH, protocol same, the port is 2222, two, 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 and that goes to 22. Two. Okay, everything looks good. All right, I'm gonna click OK. And then click OK just to make sure everything is saved. Now I can go back and we'll check it. Okay, hit cancel. And then we'll go to shared folders. The shared folder is the folder that will have the same files in both the Macintosh and the virtual machine. The reason that this feature is used is so that project files, like the code, the source code for your project, can be edited on the Macintosh. Okay, now basically we're going to attach that folder that we created in the beginning this sandbox folder here, not this one. That's the one that we created today. Okay, so we are going to create an association between that and a folder that's going to be inside the virtual machine. And at this point in time, we need to let the VM manager know where the shared folder is on the Macintosh. We haven't installed the operating system on the virtual machine yet, so we can't specify that particular folder right now. So we're going to add over here a pointer to the sandbox folder. Okay, it's sandbox under my home folder. And I click open. Okay, the folder name, that's not going to change and I'm not sure what that signifies. I'm going to leave read only unchecked because we want to be able to change files on the Macintosh and have the change carry over. We don't want to just be able to read those files. And then we're going to do auto mount so that it mounts it every time the virtual machine is powered up. Okay, and then I'm going to click OK and OK. Next, we need to install the operating system for the virtual machine. That'll be in the next video.